everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have just been doing some tie-dye t-shirts with me, whole assistant Lydell. Writer from Chemnitz. And we have some dye left over. And I had just asked Ryder, hey, do you want to dye some yarn or do you want to dye some more t-shirts? And what was your answer? I said that I would do I would do both, but if we can't, then do yarn. But we should do yarn on first, but if we have the time to, then do the salt. That sounds like a plan. By the way, I'm a kid. Yes, how old are you? Six and a half. So we're using Tulip One Step Tie Dye today, and in the colors we have yellow, green, lime green, turquoise, a light blue that I think is the turquoise pigment, but just less of it, and then we have an unnamed gray that I think was from some, I don't know if it was like a mermaid or a GNC kind of kit or something. Uh, the, when I had the little extra packets outside of the bottles, those are labeled with the color names, but the ones that were pre-filled in the bottles aren't labeled, and without the rest of the kits, I'm just guessing at the names. Yes, Ryder. So, Annie, I think I know all the name for the, that gray. What? Mysterious Gray. Ooh, Mysterious Gray, that's a great name. Well, since we don't know which real name, so let's just call it Mysterious name, Gray. <laughs> it was a mysterious name. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go get the yarn. Okay. Here is a bandana I've been using to wipe up any spills. We've been cleaning out this container in between different colors. And yeah, it's our mop, and then we can use it as like a cloth napkin later on. The yarn we're dyeing today is Knit Picks Cotton Boucle. It's 100% cotton. And the boucle is like, there's like one thick ply, one thin ply, and so it's a tiny bit wavy, but it's a really fun base to dye. I've arranged it with both ends sort of in the center together, and then the end with the zip tie towards the outside. And I have pre-soaked it for a couple of hours. I'm not sure how well saturated it is, but now I'm gonna let Ryder start applying color. Now I will admit as a mother who does not want her kitchen covered, we do have the work surface protected with a shower curtain, but the way that we do this is I have Ryder tell me what color he wants, I hand it to him, and he always keeps the bottle pointed towards what he's dyeing. Right? What? Okay, which color would you like first? Yellow. Okay. Here you go. And remember, try it. Oh, always point down, please. And you're going to want to get some on both. Yeah. Okay, let's see what I made. That's really pretty. No, thick. Look. Oh, you made a smiley face! Yeah. Aww. <laughs> okay, what color would you like next? I'm going to update down so they could see what That's, I did. I'm sure they could see it. That's wonderful. Green. Which green? That one. Okay. Remember, keep it pointed down. Okay. And I have a feeling that this process might be a slow one. So I'm gonna speed things up and Ryder and I will be talking about how this went. I gave Ryder pretty much complete creative control over which colors to use, how much of them to use. At one point after I flipped it over, I added a bunch of yellow all over because I wanted to use up some of that yellow. But really, Ryder was the driving force. What was your favorite part about dyeing this yarn, Ryder? It was when we finished up the turquoise. That because Lucas loves turquoise, then he loves blue and green, then he loves the color of us, he loves Nate, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, I liked using the last of that bottle. We almost maybe got some speckles or something from squirting yeah, that a little bit. I like how it left all of those different types of yarn, or color, so we can just put a sword on and then absorb those colors. Ooh, that sounds fun. All right, see you later. So this was mostly Ryder's direction, and we used up one of the bottles, but I think we still have enough to go do another t-shirt in that video. Now, sometimes with Pull Up Dye Dye, I'll actually heat set in, uh oh, I should be very careful, in a steamer basket. But since we have other tie-dye that's going to sit outside for 24 to 48 hours, that's what I'm going to do here. And we're going to just let it have the time that it needs outdoors. It is a very, very hot day. 
but fiber reactive dyes like this don't require heat. Um, they just need heat or time. Um, so, not that you can see it anymore. So I'm gonna seal up this plastic bag, uh, put it in a secondary container, just so that way in case there's any spills or anything like that, then we're gonna put it outside. It is time to start washing our yarn. You might tell from the green liquid in the sink that I just rinsed all of the t-shirts. Ooh, and honestly, I think we might put this yarn through the washing machine as well. But I'll talk about that more in a moment. And look at that water that's in there. The water that's in there, is it turning nice and green? Yeah, and look at it. That's another quarter of green. What I'm seeing is it's a turquoise green. A turquoise green? Yeah. Yeah, now, sometimes I get questions about Ooh, all of this dye that is coming off, can we use that to dye something else? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is pretty much no. Uh, fiber reactive dyes will react with water. And so over time, um, they become a lot less potent. Now, could we maybe get like a paler green out of that? Yes. Is this something I should try at some point? Yes. Also, yes. Hey, I have an idea, everybody. Oh, what's that, Ryder? So, we could get stain yarn, we can dry yarn, we need um, some more yarn, we get more stain yarn, and put it into the bottle, uh -huh. and see if it's dyed or not. You're right, we could... Oh. Maybe we'll Tiny. see that on the next video, yep, and if you watch it. In a future video, I think that is a good idea. We can try to have like a mini skein of yarn. I think I even have some mini skeins of cotton embroidery floss. Wait! That could work really well. Um, this yarn is actually, I think, not in focus, but it is very, very pretty. And writer, I think you did a really awesome job. Now, I mentioned that I want to try putting it through my washing machine, but I don't want things to get like all the, like, all this colorful. Well, I want the yarn to be colorful, but you one don't want the other clothes to be colorful. And I no, no, no. I want the yarn and the clothes to be colorful, but I don't want it to get tangled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a rubber band around it. I have no idea if this will work, but some other people told me about putting their cotton yarn in a delicate bag and then washing it in the washing machine because one thing I don't like about using tie-dye on yarn is just the amount of rinsing that you have to do because the cotton fibers are so absorbent that you just have to keep washing and washing and washing. Now, because I'm gonna be washing this with my t the t-shirts as well, there are maybe not the first few, but there will potentially be some laundry detergent in there. So we'll see how this goes. I'll have to think if I'm gonna do another hand wash later, I don't know. But hopefully these rubber bands and putting it inside a like delicates bag will help. I don't know, but we're gonna try it and find out. Sound good, Ritter? Yes, it does. And if you want to watch more, just subscribe. Oh yes, thank you, please subscribe. I washed our yarn in the washing machine along with all of the tie-dyed t-shirts. Here's just a selection of the shirts. This yarn was inside a garment bag in the washing machine and I did not put it in the dryer. Uh, I removed the yarn from the bag and then sort of hung it up to dry. Oh right, I used rubber bands, not zip ties. It's possible though. Ooh, what's going on here? There's the zip tie. Aha, that's just an end. It's possible that this particular cotton yarn is supposed to be hand washed dry flat. Uh oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Now, I forget how many cycles we went through the washing machine and there was detergent in there for at least a couple of them. But let's see how messed up the skein is. So far, so good. I mean, there's a little bit of something going on down there, but 
I think what I can do is take the yarn and snap it. So I don't know if I'm on camera, but basically what I'm doing is having hands on either end and snapping it to organize. Now I see, oh no, that's a tie. Ha ha, I saw a yarn end and I wasn't sure something broke, but that was just one of the ties, you know? This actually worked pretty well. And the yarn, even if it's supposed to be hand wash, it's possible that we got some shrinkage in here, but I don't think cotton ever felt, but it seems to be in good shape and it is really soft for all that it air dried. Uh, let me go take care of the other one. I would have tried to sh usually tried to show the yarn straight out of the washing machine, but the next day we actually went down to the beach for the weekend. And so I just popped this as it was straight on uh, my drying rack so it could dry. Um, and you know, this worked surprisingly well. I think that I absolutely would recommend putting rubber bands or something on. All right, so what I'm doing here is looking for the zip tie and that's where I'm going about opening it up. And oh, this one's in way better shape even before snapping than the other one. I'm gonna give it a quick snap. But that's really not bad. This yarn is really, really pretty. Now, I think for almost anything else, I wouldn't recommend machine washing the yarn, but one of the reasons why I don't like dyeing cotton yarn is the rinsing and trying to rinse out all of that dye, as much of the dye as I can. And it's possible if I was to go put this in water right now that we would see some bleeding again because it was dyed with tie dye. But I think that it's probably in better shape than it might have been if uh, I had just hand washed it. And certainly I was less frustrated. Now, when it comes to like a water wasting standpoint, uh, yeah. Uh, using the washing machine is not necessarily the best way to go. But then again, if I'm filling the sink in the basin multiple times and I'm washing on like a small load level, then I don't know. I don't know which is worse for a water conservation kind of standpoint. Um, certainly dyeing wool with acid dyes requires less washing, but I think this colorway is really fun. I love that we still have yellow, that it didn't all get overtaken. This yarn was pretty saturated with dye. I ended up moving it to the bottom of the secondary container when I took it outside because there was like a puddle of dye in the bag. But the fact that we still have the yellow and that there's this softness to it is really, really beautiful. A lot of variegated cotton yarn that you can buy, say at Michael's or Joann's, when you have color changes, there's usually a much harsher line there. There isn't like a softness sort of blend to it. And this is something that you could end up with some pulling sections, but since the sections are different sizes and there's differences throughout the skein, um, you could get sort of, you couldn't get planned pulling from this for sure. But how pretty is this? Oh my goodness. The colors could definitely be more vibrant. And don't get me wrong, we do have some brightness with our yellow. Um, and it's funny, like on camera, things are maybe feeling a little bit more pastel than what I see in person. But I think that that also is because the dye I used is Tulip One Step Tie Dye. And we did dye this yarn within probably 30 minutes of having mixed the dyes. We did all of this dyeing all at once in one sitting. And so it's not like the dyes started to get less potent in the short time frame that we were dealing with. Uh, and so I have a feeling that I would be able to get much more vibrant and saturated colors if I was using my own dyes with fiber reactive dyes because I could have more control over the potency and, I mean, I don't think it's the quality of the pigments that Tulip offers that gives sort of less super bright colors, and because sometimes they can be a little bit bright, but I think it's more that they just don't have that much dye in each of the bottles. At least that's what I'm hoping. <laughs>
But anyway, now I need to go and uh, show the yarn to Ryder and so we can find out what he thought. Are you ready to see the yarn? Yes. <laughs> Let's get it. Are you ready to see the yarn? I think they probably already saw it. <laughs> so what do you think of the yarn? Yeah? What, tell me what you like about it. Describe it. I like that it's mostly green and yellow, and that you don't see very much gray. You don't see very much gray? Um, and what, how does it feel? So nice. I would sleep with this if I can. Oh, yeah? It really feels like a pillow. Well, clearly, Ryder and I have been doing some other dyeing as well. We've referenced the t-shirt video a few times. You can go find that on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, and there is even a whole tie-dyeing shirts playlist, I think. This and so, is the sort, and this is my sort. Just two of them. We dyed how many? Seven? <laughs> but we couldn't have a Mommy and Ryder dyeing day without dyeing some yarn. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I do have more plans to dye more cotton this summer. I'm not sure when the videos will come out, but uh, please make sure you are subscribed so that way you don't miss any of it. Mamo, hit that subscribe button, but don't actually break your device. <laughs> yeah, turn up. Oh, careful so you don't break my device. Uh, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Yep. You really should. I am Rebecca. Yeah. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this is Ryder from Chemnitz. And thank you so much for watching our video. Thank you. Yawn. <laughs> Can you say goodbye? Bye. Yawn. Say goodbye. 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 <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.